All right, so today we're gonna do a little radical polymerization with some styrene. You all have polystyrene that you use um, when you're going to get takeout or when you're working with, let's say, sometimes harder polystyrene, which are great for some kinds of uh, plastic inserts and uh, cheap plastic toys. Uh, styrene is in a lot of different places. It's a very robust polymer, very popular because of how inert it is and all of its different uses. When it comes to looking at uh, the process here, it's going to be very simple. We're going to just take this test tube. It's going to be heated on uh, or in a water bath on this uh, hot plate. And we're going to just place some of these uh, toluene and styrene into this test tube, which has been very carefully dried. And then we're going to place the radical initiator inside the test tube to allow the, the reaction to begin. Now, when it comes to any kind of radical reactions, you wanna be very careful about uh, what you add and how fast you add it. Radical reactions can get really nasty really fast, so just before you add the radical initiator in any future reactions, if you're doing any kind of radical um, initiations, you wanna just double check all of your procedure very carefully first to make sure you're not gonna potentially create um, anything explosive, because sometimes that can happen um, in radical reactions. We're going to add, in this case, for the styrene, four milliliters to this graduated cylinder. Pour that in here. Then you want to take some toluene, and because it's going to be the solvent anyways, I'm going to put. I'm going to make sure I put this on carefully here. And take the toluene, and we're going to just use it to rinse the last. Two. If you get a little bit more than 10 milliliters, it doesn't matter too much. Now that they're allowed to mix, just set these aside. And we're going to uh, take our benzoyl chloride, and, which is our radical initiator. We're going to pour it into I thought I had it secure. I'm going to just double that up real quick. If you don't see any more of the benzoyl chloride on the top, uh, which I see a little bit of it, so I'm going to grab another pipette and rinse it. That was a little perilous, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. So you want to clamp this firmly in place. And you're going to take just a wad of dry paper. In this case, we're using just a couple Kim wipes. Make sure that they're securely fastened and not going to slide down. And you're going to put them into this tube. Paper is nice because it can also allow air permeation. Air is not going to build up too much back, back behind it and it's not going to block uh, gas release. Um, and then you're going to place that carefully into the hot water bath. And you won't really need to stir this. You just need to let it sit there for about an hour and set and then you're going to have uh, the reaction closely complete. It'll be a little thicker, so you should keep an eye on it throughout the entire hour just to see if you notice any visible changes. Like uh, once you see the uh, styrene polymerizing, is it going to change in solubility? 
hard to say unless you already know what to expect. So you should always keep an eye, no matter how long the reaction is going to actually take. All right. So while the polystyrene is cooling here, um, after it's been uh, sort of heating for an hour in this boiling water bath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set up the nylon preparation. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some hexamethylene diamine uh, and we're going to take some of the sebaquo chloride. We're going to react them to form a strand of nylon that we're going to pull out with this copper wire. Now the cool thing about this is process is you can actually use food color to make any color of the nylon you desire. So today, thinking, I don't know, kind of fun to make some purple nylon. So I get a little bit of blue and some red. And between these two choices of solvent, these are water-based food coloring. Um, so you're going to think about, okay, so which of these two solvents are going to be more soluble with the food coloring? Well, the sepulchral chloride is dissolved in cyclohexane. It's a 2% solution. And the hexameth uh, hexamethylene diamine is going to be uh, in a 4.4% solution and it's going to be aqueous uh, with, uh, it's going to be also quite basic. So you want to make sure that you think about this for a second before you give your answer and the aqueous solution will actually be a little bit better here. So what we'll do, since the aqueous solution is going to be a little bit more dense as well, is we're going to take seven milliliters of this and place it in the bottom of this beaker. And then we're going to dye it. Then, I'm just going to take one drop of each of these and put them into my aqueous solution after I close the lid. Don't want to contaminate starting materials. Set that aside. So one drop into this solution of the red. And one drop of the blue. Alright, so we got a little bit of red, a little bit of blue there. And it turned out to be a bit more of a greenish brown color. I don't know, it's, it's not reacting. Oh, it's sort of like a wine red there. Alright, so now that this is mixed together, I don't know if this is going to be as pretty as I hoped it would be. We will see. We get some of the sepulchral chloride and a fresh pipette. I thought I was being creative and cool there. It did not work. Oh well, another day. Get to the seven there. And what you want to do is you want to gently layer it onto the top of this solution. So. All right, so you can sort of see a layer forming if you look closely. And it's kind of like, almost like a film has already formed. That's basically the liquid interface between the organic solution and the aqueous solution where that nylon is forming. So in order to actually get your hands on that nylon, you're going to have to pull that up and allow more nylon to form as the uh, nylon is removed from that interface and more of the sebaquo chloride and the hexamethylene diamine can actually react. So let's see that in practice. I'm going to use this glass stir rod to collect the nylon as it is raised. Just going to hook up some of this 
strip some of this nylon. All right. Put a little bubble there. That's icky. Don't want to take any solution with this. <laughs> All right, let's hook it back up here. So as you keep pulling the strand, you're going to keep pulling with it more of that nylon. <laughs> you just park this before I make a huge mess here. Alright, I'm just gonna stir this, I'm just gonna twist this around to make this a little safer. So as you keep pulling this nylon up. You're going to keep exposing the aqueous layer to the organic layer, and you're going to keep forming nylon. And it's going to be this hideous green color that I've accidentally formed, but it's better than nothing. So, I thought I was going to make some cool purple nylon today, and it did not work. Also, you definitely don't want to use any of this food coloring, which has been around this stuff, for any kind of cookies. Try to keep it for nylon production purposes only. But until we deplete all of that sebaquil chloride and that hexamethylene diamine, we are going to keep twisting this stir rod and keep producing nylon. And it is going to be totally gruesome. But it's still pretty cool. It's kind of shiny. It's almost like taffy. I'm gonna kind of look at that forming. Very weird structure there. Good texture. And that's how nylon's made. Imagine that they were pretty surprised when they figured it out. Oh, that was the end of it. So you could, what you could do is you could wash this off or you could, uh, and then you could dry it and that would give you some pure clean nylon, but I'm probably just going to let this hang out in a heap in the solid waste bin, um, but it is interesting. And then next time, maybe I'll produce a remotely desirable color. That would be great. We will see. All right, back to the polystyrene. All right, time for the second part of the polystyrene polymerization, which is a free radical polymerization that we performed. I'm gonna take the paper tube top or tube cap out of our tube of reacted styrene and dissolved in toluene and then reacted with sevacol chloride for the radical initiation. And then uh, we are going to mix that in with some methanol over here. So this methanol is slightly cool. It's chilled from another experiment. I'm going to put 15 milliliters of that. Now we're going to try to precipitate this polystyrene out of this solution. So you want to be stirring constantly once you get going. Uh, I'm gonna grab a stirring rod. I'm gonna combine this and get to stirring. So immediately, uh, rapid precipitation take place. And 
now we're going to allow it to settle a little bit before we mess with it too much. All right, so we've allowed our solution to so settle a little bit. It immediately appeared to be precipitating. Lost a little bit there. <laughs> um, it's not safe. So you wanna make sure that you look for the bottom layer and then pour off the top layer um, or to can off the top layer into some kind of waste beaker that you have on hand, reserving that bottom layer behind. So if you can see closely here, there's a slight layer that's formed. We're gonna do our best to keep all of that, get rid of a little bit of the stuff off the top. I'll put about 20 milliliters. Looks like we're getting some kind of goo here. So you want to keep working at this until you start to notice the formation of that precipitate slow down. And then you'll precip you'll do your best to decant off the solution again. Pretty icky stuff so far. But man, if I was a six-year-old kid, I thought, I'd think that this was amazing though. Look at that. Just gooey slime. What a mess. So I'm going to carefully decant off some of the top solution. And a little bit more of the methanol. Let's see another 20 milliliters. By adding extra methanol, we're pushing this polystyrene further and further out of solution. to precipitate and changing how soluble it is in solution. So there's a little chunk of it. Hopefully we got more than that. Maybe I lost a little bit in here. Very possible. But for the purpose of what we're doing today, I'm not going to spend too much time trying to go after every last smidgen of that polystyrene. It is worth noting though, in your notebook, what the color is, the consistency, and whether you think it's looking waxy or crystalline. I would say on the side of waxy here, so maybe more amorphous, less crystalline. So there are more chunks inside of here that are just too small and they're not attached to this larger chunk. But it's also soft and gummy it's worth noting. Material properties are it's not brittle or anything. And it's almost like waxy clay, the way it feels to the touch. Cool. Well, it looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dry this and I'm going to collect as much of it and filter it. And that is kind of an arduous process, so I'm not going to include it in the video today. But overall, the key here is that you're just going to mostly observe that it was produced and that it was produced by a radical reaction. That's the point.